Hey guys, welcome back. So the first thing that we need to do having set up our environment and everything is to create our project. So what we're going to do is launch Visual Studio and then we're going to go to create new project. Now from here, you can choose the template that you want. If you have ASP.NET Core Web Application at the top, go ahead and select it. If you don't, then you can just type in web in this filter and it will filter it down. We're going to be using C Sharp. So make sure that C Sharp is selected and well, you don't have to change much else, but to select the desired template and go ahead and click next. Now we'll be building a hotel listing API. So I'm going to call my project hotel listing. All right now that we have that, we don't have to change much else. We can go ahead and click create. If you want to select a specific location, you may go ahead and do that. Otherwise proceed with create. Next step has us selecting the stack that we intend to use. Now you would have already installed the .NET 5 SDK and Visual Studio 2019. So you should have .NET Core 5.0 as, a, as an option. If you don't have this, then you should have 3.1. Either way, you can just double back, go ahead and install the SDK, review that video if you need to, make sure you have everything installed and then you can go ahead and select 5.0 and we will be building an ASP.NET Core Web API. Now to the right, we have the option of adding authentication and configuring some other things. So we'll leave everything as is. We won't be configuring authentication here because the options that are given to us are not really what we want. So we'll be manually configuring that later on and that would be a good exercise to at least help you understand how identity core gets integrated into your api but we can leave it as no authentication right now and then we can go ahead and click create so now that our project has been created the just a point out before I move much further, my, the layout of my Visual Studio may look different from yours because I tend to use the Solution Explorer on my left hand side. By default, it should be on the right or it would be on the right. So that's probably what yours looks like. Either way, you can always drag it and put it wherever you want. I like to have it to the left, so that's where I'll be using mine. Now the Solution Explorer is giving us a list of files, and I'm just going through this in case this is your first time creating a .NET project. If it's not, then I'll just go over this anyway because you know repetition deepens impression, and maybe I'll point out something that you didn't know before, but hey. So the first thing that we want to look at is our properties folder. So let me let's, let me start over. So we have what we call the solution, which is like a manifest for the list of projects that are in this solution that we're building. The project is hotel listing. I notice when I click it, it's really just an XML file with a bunch of configurations and listings and other things needed for the project to know what its identity is. So because we chose .NET 5.0, you see that's the target framework. If we choose 3.1, we would see something different there. Under properties, or rather I'm at dependencies, we see analyzers, frameworks, packages. As we go along, you'll see this list growing, so I won't get too much into what's happening there. We look at properties, we see the launch settings. So here it's like just configurations to tell the application how it should behave when we are in debug mode. So what's very important here though is that we did allow it to configure SSL or HTTPS when we're creating a project. As a result, we have this SSL port. So when we're doing our application testing and so on, we'll be at HTTPS colon slash slash localhost colon. And then because it's HTTPS, we're using the SSL port. Otherwise, this would be the less secure HTTP endpoint. So that's just a little... Uh, thing that I'm pointing out. Otherwise, the other configurations we'll get into as we go along. We have our controllers folder, which really houses our, well, controllers, and these do exactly what the name suggests. They control the application flow, the logic, how everything goes. You know, when we receive a request for information, how we interpret it and all of those behaviors 
would get defined inside of our controllers. These are the first lines of defense. Once you hit an API endpoint, you're actually coming to a controller and then it would say, okay, which endpoint was hit? What should I do? And then it will return accordingly. Once again, as we go on, you'll see that come to life. All right, I'm going to skip ahead to our app settings.json, which doesn't have much. We'll be modifying that as we go along though, but let me go on to the program.cs, which is the starting point for our application. So here you see it runs this main function. So if you've ever done another a language or developed any C-sharp console applications, you'll notice that you always start with main. At least C++, C-sharp, Java, all of those languages at least have a main method, right? So once we're running our API, it's going to hit the main and then main is going to basically do like a building. So what it does is it aggregates all of the middlewares and functionality and puts into the application. So it calls this method, which is really defined right below, and it does its initializations based on what is in our startup file. So if I go to startup, here's where you see where all the middlewares are added and the configurations are called at the get-go. So here we say we want to use controllers to add whatever libraries you need to add so that we can use our controllers. Set up Swagger. So traditionally, Swagger would have been, uh, you would have to implement that manually since this version of .NET API, it comes out of the box. So we don't have to do too much work, but we'll be exploring what Swagger is later on in case you are not quite sure what it is. Um, we, so that's configuration, ser configure services, sorry. We have configure, which allows us to set up some other functionality. So without getting too much into them, some of them are self-explanatory, some of them are for security reasons, and some of them are really nice to have. And we are going to be adding more and more as we put more features into our API. So don't worry too much about it. And the final file in this solution would just be this model. So this model just basically represents data or a strongly typed unit of data and we'll be defining lots of models and data transfer objects later on. But for now, we have created our project. We should have a fair understanding of what we're looking at inside of this solution. And when we come back, we will start configuring our first added service in the form of logging.